area between curves. Suppose we wish to find the area between two functions f of x and g of x on the interval from x equals a to x equals b. We already have some experience finding areas, so this should not be terribly challenging to do. We're going to approximate the area under the curve by taking the interval from a to b and dividing it up into sub-intervals, like you see here. And then on each of the sub-intervals, we will create a rectangle, which will serve to approximate the area for that particular sub-interval. Now, if you look at this rectangle, to find the area, you need to know its height and its width. Now, its width, of course, is delta x. And to get its height, all we need to do is take the y value corresponding to this point and subtract the y value corresponding to this point. So to get the height of the rectangle, we're going to take f of x i star minus g of x i star. And then the area of that rectangle will be the height times the width. And so we can express that area as follows. And then to approximate the total area, we will add up the areas of all such rectangles. So we will take the sum i equals 1 to n. But to get the exact area, we need to use more rectangles. And so ultimately, we take the limit as n goes to infinity of this sum. But you should recognize that this is the limit of a Riemann sum. And we know that when you take the limit of a Riemann sum, you get a definite integral. And so in this case, the area between f of x and g of x will be the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x times dx. Now, one thing that's very important to keep in mind as you look at the formula for the area between two curves is this is only true if f of x is the top function and g of x is the bottom function. Because when you get the height of the rectangle, you have to take the greater y value minus the lesser y value. If you subtract it in the wrong order, your area will end up being negative. And unlike area in the past, the area between two curves is always a positive number. Now, another way to think about the area between two curves with respect to x is pretty much the same idea, but to calculate the area between f of x and g of x, between x equals a and x equals b, we simply integrate from a to b, and we take the absolute value of f of x minus g of x. Now, when you write the absolute value, that ensures that the height of the rectangle will come out to be positive, no matter if you have the correct function on top or not. But when actually doing integrals, the only way to integrate an absolute value is to know which function is on top and which one is on the bottom. So really, the more practical way to find the area is to take the integral from a to b of yt minus yb dx. And yt is going to be the top function, and yb is going to be the bottom function. Now, it's pretty much what I had on the previous page, but I just bring it up again because a lot of times you will see the area written as an absolute value. But again, you cannot integrate with an absolute value inside of your integral. 
So you're going to have to figure out which function is on top and which one's on the bottom. Let's take a look at some examples. So in our first example, we want to find the area of the region bounded above by y equals e to the x and bounded below by y equals x and bounded on the sides by x equals 0 and x equals 1. And here is an, an illustration of those two functions. So we have y equals e to the x, that's this function here. And we have y equals x, which looks something like this. x equals 0 is here, x equals 1 is here. And we can see from the graph that e to the x is above y equals x. And so when I find an area of a sample rectangle, I'm going to take the function e to the x minus the function x to get the height of that rectangle. And then I'll multiply it by the width, and then we'll take the integral. So the area between these two curves is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of the top function, e to the x, minus the bottom function, which is just x, and then with respect to x. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x, minus the antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. And now we'll use the fundamental theorem of calculus, integrate from 0 to 1. So we will plug in 1, which looks like this, and then we'll plug in 0, which looks like this. And what we get in the end is e to the 1 is e minus 1 half minus e to the 0 is 1, and of course, 0 squared divided by 2 is 0. And so this ends up being e minus 3 halves. In our second example, we wish to find the area of the region enclosed by the parabolas y equals x squared and y equals 2x minus x squared. Now, y equals x squared is your basic parabola. That's this one right here. And then y equals 2x minus x squared. We know that's a parabola that opens downward because it has a negative in front of the x squared. And here, of course, we have a nice picture of these parabolas. And we can see that they intersect at the point 0, 0 and at the point 1, 1. But what if you did not have a graph of these parabolas? How would you know where they intersect and what the boundaries are? In other words, how would you set this up if the graph wasn't there already for you? So let's think about how we would approach this if the graph was not there. So we would start by finding the intersection between these two curves. And so if y equals x squared and if y equals 2x minus x squared, to find the intersection, we take the two functions x squared and 2x minus x squared, and we set them equal to each other. Now to solve this, we just need to solve the corresponding polynomial equation here. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. And that's going to give us 0 equals 2x minus 2x squared. From there, we can factor out 2x on both sides, and that will leave us with 1 minus x. And then we can set 2x equal to 0 and 1 minus x equal to 0. In solving these two equations, we find out we get x equals 0 and x equals 1. So what that means is that these two functions intersect at x equals 0 and x equals 1. So next, we would at least need to have an approximate graph to find the area between these two curves. So let's create that graph. So again, we know they intersect at x equals 0 and x equals 1. So how would we create that graph? And we'll just do one by hand here. Well, first of all, we know the function y equals x squared is a really simple function to graph. It's our basic parabola, and we should all remember how to graph this function. So I'm putting down some of those points now. So here is y equals x squared, a rough sketch. 
Now, we know these two curves intersect when x equals 0 and x equals 1, and we can see on the graph of y equals x squared, x equals 0 is here and x equals 1 is here. Furthermore, we know the other parabola, as I mentioned earlier, is going to open downward. So no matter what happens in this picture, we know this other parabola must do something like this. And it doesn't really matter exactly what the graph looks like. This is good enough. Because from this picture, we can clearly see that this function here is the top function, and this function here is the bottom function. And that's really what you need to know, which one is on top and which one is on the bottom. And then to find the area, you would look at a sample rectangle and you would take the height of that rectangle multiplied by the width of that rectangle. So now I'm going to erase my graph here and bring in the nice graph that we had a few minutes ago just to make it look a little bit nicer from this point onward. But when you're doing these on your own, you're going to have to sketch your own basic graph to figure out where they intersect and which curve is on top and which one is on the bottom. So now, to find the area between these two curves, we are just going to take the integral from 0 to 1, and then we're going to take the top curve, which is 2x minus x squared, minus the bottom curve, which is x squared. And that whole thing gets multiplied by dx. Now let's go ahead and simplify. 2x minus x squared minus x squared is 2x minus 2x squared. And now we'll take the antiderivative. The antiderivative of 2x is 2x squared divided by 2. And the antiderivative of 2x squared is 2x to the third divided by 3. And we'll evaluate this from 0 to 1. Now let's go ahead and simplify 2x squared divided by 2 is simply x squared and then minus 2x cubed over 3. Now when I plug in 1, we get 1 squared minus 2 times 1 cubed over 3 minus, when you plug in 0, you get 0 squared minus 2 times 0 cubed divided by 3. And these are both equal to 0. And we end up with 1 minus 2 thirds, which of course is 1 third. In the next problem, we want to find the area between the two curves. y equals the square root of x minus 1, and x minus y is equal to 1. And again, the first thing you need to do is sketch a graph. And then we need to find out where the curves intersect. So let's go ahead and bring in an x and y axis here so that we can sketch the graph. So first let's point out with the function y equals the square root of x minus 1. The smallest number you can plug in for x there is 1. Because when you plug in 1, 1 minus 1 is 0 and the square root of 0 is 0. If you plug in 2, you get the square root of 1, which is 1. And I'll skip a couple of numbers and I'll plug in 5. And that gives us the square root of 4, which is 2. So we have the point 1, 0. We have the point 2, 1. And we have the point 5, 2, which is just a little bit off of my graph here. So let me go ahead and create that point. And so here is what that function looks like. Now, the other function is x minus y is equal to 1. And you can graph this any number of ways. It's a line, so all you need is two points to graph a line. So what two numbers can you subtract to get 1? Well, there's lots of numbers you can subtract to get 1. But of course, one combination is x equals 1 and y equals 0. And another combination is x equals 2 and y equals 1. And you'll notice that that is simply this point here and this point here. And if I just sketch a line going through those two points, you can see that we have x minus y equals 1 right there, and y equals the square root of x minus 1 here. 
So now to find the area, we need to figure out which curve is on top and which is on the bottom, and also where is the enclosed area. Well, it's pretty simple to see the enclosed area is this small piece of area in between the two functions here. And it's also pretty simple to see that the function that is on top, which I'll call yt, is the square root function. And the function that's on the bottom, which I will call yb, is the other function. Now, to get yb, we have to actually take the other equation and solve it for y. So if x minus y is equal to 1, I can add y to both sides. And then we can subtract 1 from both sides. And we end up getting y is equal to x minus 1. And now to find the area between these two curves, we are just going to take the integral from the left intersection point, which is x equals 1, to the right intersection point, which is x equals 2. And then we'll take the top function, which is x minus 1, minus the bottom function. Excuse me, I said x minus 1. I meant to say the square root of x minus 1. And then the bottom function, which is just x minus 1. And so here is the integral we need to compute to get the area. Now let's go ahead and simplify just a little bit more here. We have the integral from 1 to 2. We have the square root of x minus 1. I'm going to distribute the negative here. That's going to give us minus x plus 1 dx. And now when you integrate this, it's a little bit interesting because to do this integral, you need to do this one separately because this integral requires a substitution. So what I'm going to do is integrate from 1 to 2, the square root of x minus 1, dx, plus, and then I'll integrate from 1 to 2, the other part, which is negative x plus 1, dx. Okay, so for this one here, we're going to let u equal x minus 1, du is equal to dx, and this becomes the integral of the square root of u, du. Also, we know that when x equals 2, u is going to be 1. And when x equals 1, u is going to be 0. So I'm just changing the limits of integration here into limits for u. And then we'll go ahead and do this integral. So when you integrate, you're going to get u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves from 0 to 1 which is 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. And when you plug in 1 and then plug in 0, you are going to end up getting 2 thirds. So that is the value of this integral. Now let's go ahead and find the value of this integral, which will be a little bit easier because we don't need to use substitution for that one. So the integral from 1 to 2 of negative x plus 1 dx, antiderivative is negative x squared over 2 plus x from 1 to 2. That's going to be negative 2 squared over 2 plus 2 minus negative 1 squared over 2 plus 1. And if you do the math on this, we have 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So that is negative 2 plus 2 minus, and then here we have negative 1 half plus 1. Of course, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half. And then we do have a negative here. And so we're going to end up getting negative 1 half. So the area under the curve, remember, was equal to this integral plus this integral. And so now I'm just going to add those two things together. So we had 2 thirds plus negative 1 half. And if you do the math on this, you get 4 over 6 minus 3 over 6, which is 1 over 6. 
which kind of makes sense because remember when we drew the graph, there's a very, very small amount of area that we can see between those two curves there. So it's not terribly surprising that the area is a pretty small number. Next, we want to find the area between the two curves, y equals cosine of x and y equals the sine of 2x on the interval from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 2. Now, you have to be able to at least sketch a graph of these trig functions, and that can be a little bit challenging. And then you might also need to find the intersection point for these functions. So let's go ahead and sketch a graph. So let's remind ourselves what y equals cosine of x looks like. We should know that at 0, cosine is 1. At pi, cosine is negative 1. And at 2 pi, cosine is 1 again. And then it's going to cross halfway in between those points. And so your cosine graph should look something like this. Now, what about y equals sine of 2x? So I hope you remember that y equals sine of x looks like this. So what does y equals sine of 2x look like? Well, the answer is the period gets reduced. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. So what that means is that it's going to go through its whole cycle in pi units instead of the normal 2 pi units. So what that's going to translate to here, if I put down the pi, is it's going to go up, down, and back up again, all in that amount of space. So if I put that on the graph here, it's going to be... 0 when it's at 0. It's going to be 0 at pi. It's also going to be 0 here. And then halfway in between at pi over 4, it's going to be up here at 1. And so the graph looks something like this. Okay, now let's keep in mind that we're only interested in finding the area between 0 and pi over 2, which means we're looking at the graph from here to here only. So because of that, let me go ahead and erase the rest of the graph so that it doesn't obscure what we're trying to do here. Now, here is our graph, and we are looking at the area between the two curves. So if I shade in the area in between the two curves, you can see that we are looking at this area here, and this area here. So can you see that that's going to require two integrals to find this area? Because remember, when you take the integral to find the area, you have to take the top function minus the bottom function. And for the first section of area, the blue graph is on top and the green graph is on the bottom. But then somewhere in here, it switches and now the green graph is on top, and the blue graph is on the bottom. So we have two things that we need to figure out here. Number one, where do they intersect? That's going to be very important. What is this point right here? And then we can easily see which curve is on top and which one's on the bottom. So how do we find that intersection point? Well, to get the intersection, we're going to set the two curves equal to each other. So we're going to take cosine of x and set it equal to sine of 2x. And we need to solve this equation, and this can be a little bit tricky. When solving trigonometric equations, you really want your angles to agree with each other. So I'm going to bring in a double angle identity for sine of 2x. Let's remember that sine of 2x is the same as 2 sine of x cosine of x. And now to solve this equation, I'm going to subtract cosine of x from both sides of the equation. And that gives us 0 equals 2 sine of x cosine of x minus cosine of x. And we can solve this by factoring out a cosine. 
and then setting each of our two factors equal to zero. And this second factor, when you set it equal to zero, is equivalent to sine of x is equal to one half. Now, I won't get too much into the details here, but the intersection point that we care about here is x equals pi over six, and the intersection that we care about here would be pi over two. So we know that cosine of pi over two is zero, and we know that sine of pi over six is one half. Now, there are many other solutions to both of these equations, but these are the only two that matter. So let's go ahead and confirm, yes, at pi over two, the curves do intersect, but of course, we already kind of knew that. But this intersection point right here, that's the one that's pi over six. So let's go ahead and indicate that now. All right, so how are we gonna find the area between these two curves? We are now gonna have to set up two separate integrals. So to find this first region here, we're going to take the integral from 0 to pi over 6, and then we're going to subtract the blue curve, which is cosine of x, minus the green curve, which was the sine of 2x dx, and then we're going to add the integral from pi over 6 to pi over 2. So now we're looking for this region. And now the top curve is sine of 2x minus the bottom curve is cosine of x dx. Okay, so now this whole problem comes down to finding this integral and then finding this integral and adding those two together to get the solution. So let's go ahead and focus on this first integral here. There's actually a couple of different ways we can do this first integral, but what I'm gonna do here is just use a trig identity. We know that sine of two x is equal to two times sine of x times cosine of x, and we'll plug that in here. And once we've done that, we can factor out a cosine here. So let's go ahead and pull that out. So this gives us the integral from zero to pi over six. We have cosine of x times one minus two sine of x dx. And now from here, what we can do is we can use a u substitution. I'm just gonna let u equal one minus two sine of x and du will be negative two cosine of x dx. And so notice that we don't have a negative two in front of our cosine. So we can go ahead and put that in as long as I compensate for that by putting a negative one half on the outside. And this becomes negative one half integral of u du, right? Because this is u and negative two cosine x dx is du. Now let's go ahead and change the limits. So when x is zero, u will be one minus two times the sine of zero, which is one. And when x is pi over six, u will be one minus two times the sine of pi over six which is one minus two times one half, which is one minus one, which is zero. Now we can use a property of integrals, which allows us to switch these limits and take this negative away here. So we get the integral from zero to one, u du, and with a positive one half in front. Taking the antiderivative now, Antiderivative of u is u squared divided by two. And this gives us u squared over four from zero to one. And then plugging in one and plugging in zero and subtracting, we end up getting one fourth. And so the value of 
this integral here is one fourth. So now we just need to find the value of this other integral. All right, so now working on this integral here, I'm going to apply the same identity. So sine of 2x can be expressed as 2 sine x cosine x. The rest is the same. And then we'll employ the same strategy here. We can factor out a cosine. And when we do that, we're going to have 2 sine of x minus 1 times cosine of x dx. So I'm just pulling out the cosine here, choosing to take it out to the right. Limits are the same. And now we'll go ahead and apply the same substitution. So we'll let u equal 2 sine of x minus 1. Well, it's almost the same substitution as the last one. And then du here is going to be 2 cosine of x dx. So again, we don't have the 2 in front of the cosine, so I can go ahead and put that in here as long as I compensate by putting a 1 half on the outside. And this becomes 1 half integral of u du. And then we'll change the limits once again. So when x is equal to pi over 6, u is going to end up being 0. You can check that by plugging pi over 6 in here. And when x is pi over 2, u is going to be 1. And this, of course, turns into 1 half, and then the antiderivative is u squared divided by 2. And if you finish this up, you will find that this integral is also 1 fourth. And so the total value here is 1 fourth plus 1 fourth which is one half. What if you want to find the area between two curves with respect to y? And why would you want to do this? Well, sometimes just the nature of the curves themselves, the way that they are shaped, sometimes it's easier to find the area sideways than it is to find it vertically. So how does this work? Well, it pretty much works the same way. We're going to find the area of a rectangle by finding delta y. And then we'll find the height of the rectangle. Well, the height of the rectangle, since it's laying sideways, you have to take the right value minus the left value. So you have to do f of y minus g of y. And then it's just like finding an integral with respect to x. So the area is uh, integral from c to d right curve minus left curve. And if you label it using x's instead of functions, then we would say xr is the right curve and xl is the left curve. And so it's the same exact concept as finding an area with respect to x, ex except that instead of doing the top minus the bottom, you're going to be doing the right minus the left. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose I want to find the area enclosed by the line y equals x minus 1 and the parabola y squared equals 2x plus 6. And again, let's do this on our own so that we can kind of emphasize the work that would be involved. And then I'll bring in a nice graph to show you what that really looks like. So first, let's find the intersection of these two curves. So if y is equal to x minus 1, and if y squared is equal to 2x plus 6, we can make a substitution here. y equals x minus 1 can be substituted into here to replace that y. And if you do that, you get x minus 1 squared is equal to 2x plus 6. And then you can FOIL the left-hand side and then we can solve this by subtracting 2x and subtracting 6. And that's going to give us x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. And then we can factor this into x minus 5 
and x plus 1. And of course, this means that x will be equal to 5 and negative 1. And those are our two solutions. Okay, now what do the graphs look like? Well, y equals x minus 1 is a line. And so that is going to have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of positive 1. And you could just find a couple of points, but this one here is really pretty simple to graph. So that is what that one looks like. And then y squared is equal to 2x plus 6. That's a little bit more interesting. The way you typically will graph this, since it is a sideways parabola, is you'll want to solve for x. So here I am doing the work solving for x, and when I solve it completely for x, I'm going to get 1 half y squared minus 3. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am just dividing each of these by 2. And now I can find some points just by plugging in some values of x and getting values of y. Now, two particular values of x that I want to plug in would be x equals 5 and x equals negative 1, because we know that those are supposed to be the intersection points of these two curves. So if I let x equal 5, and it's, it's actually easier to do that up here with this, if I let x equal 5, I get y squared equals 2 times 5 plus 6, that says y squared equals 16, which means y is going to be positive or negative 4. And if I let x equal negative 1, y squared is going to be 2 times negative 1 plus 6, which means y squared is 4, or y is equal to plus or minus 2. Let's go ahead and graph those, and I'll do that in a different color here. So we have positive 5, positive 4, that's this point right here, positive 5, negative 4. And then we have negative 1, positive 2, and negative 1, negative 2. And you can kind of see that the parabola is going like this. And that's really enough for what we're going to do here. But let's go ahead and find where the vertex of that parabola is. So it comes in something like this, and there should be a vertex back here somewhere. So how would we find the vertex of that parabola? Well, it's actually just going to happen uh, halfway in between uh, these x values, excuse me, these y values here. So you can see that these y values are positive 2 and negative 2, positive 4 and negative 4. So it should be at y equals 0. That's halfway in between positive 4 and negative 4 and positive 2 and negative 2. And if I plug in y equals 0, I'm going to get x equals negative 3. And we have the point negative 3, 0, which is right here. Okay, so now we have the graph. It looks something like this. We can see the area we are looking for is this area in between the two curves. And I want you to realize that if you were doing this with respect to x, you would have to do two separate integrals because the top curve and the bottom curve are not the same for this region as they are for this region. So it's much easier just to do this problem with respect to y. So the right curve is going to be the function here, but we're going to solve it for x. So we're going to get x is equal to y plus 1. That's the right curve. And then the left curve is this one over here, and we're going to solve it for x, which we already did over there. And that's 1 half y squared minus 3. Now, if I want to find the area in between these two curves, that area is going to be the integral from the intersection down here, which is at y equals negative 2, and the intersection up here, which is at y equals positive 4. And then we're going to take the right curve, which is y plus 1, minus the left curve, which is 1 half y squared minus 3. And now we just have to compute this integral. It's not too bad. We have y plus 1 minus 
1 half y squared, and then minus minus 3 is plus 3. And let's go ahead and combine 1 plus 3 here. We know that that's 4. And I'll also put the negative 1 half y squared first, plus y, plus 4. And now the antiderivative, antiderivative, and antiderivative of each one of those. And then the fundamental theorem of calculus says to plug in 4. So there it is. Minus, and then plug in negative 2. And now we'll do the math here. This is negative 64 over 6 plus 16 over 2 plus 16. And then we have negative 8 times negative 1 sixth is going to be 8 over 6. And then we have another negative here. So make sure you distribute this negative. And that is negative 8 over 6 minus 4 divided by 2 plus 8. So now let's combine. We have negative 64 over 6 and negative 8 over 6, which is negative 72 over 6. And then here we have 16 divided by 2, which is 8. 8 plus 16 is 24. 24 plus 8 is 32, and then minus 2 is going to be plus 30, and this is negative 12 plus 30, which is equal to 18. And so the area between these two curves is 18 square units. And that concludes this video lesson.